this is Nina Curley of Wamda Media. I'm here at the World Economic Forum chatting with Dan Eisenberg, professor at Babson and founder of the Babson Entrepreneurship Ecosystem Project. Dan, how are you? Good. Great. It's great to be here. Excellent. You've written extensively about entrepreneurship and have a lot of opinions about what makes a good entrepreneur and what doesn't, um, and also what makes a good ecosystem, clearly. I'm just curious, what do you think the proper role is for government when it comes to supporting entrepreneurs? So government is essential, but it's important to, ask, to answer the question essential at what. So if you look at how entrepreneurship has developed, in certain hot spots of entrepreneurship around the world, and I'm not just referring to Silicon Valley, you see that a lot of things happen in the environment. Not necessarily all at once, but over time a lot of things happen. Uh, capital is formed, people start investing, banks become more venture friendly, educational institutions start teaching people how to be entrepreneurs in various ways. Um, and government plays a role as well, but it's important that the government role be always a role that is limited. Otherwise, if government gets too over-involved in entrepreneurship, it gets distorted. If government gets too involved in markets, the markets get distorted. But government plays a very important role in setting the rules, creating the, the sort of framework conditions in which entrepreneurs and the other players in the ecosystem can play their role. Do you feel that they should support entrepreneurs financially? Well, no, I think they should not, in a word. There are ways of, in certain situations, when, things need to, when the pump needs to be primed, there are ways of priming the pump. But you know, in priming the pump, you do a first few primes of it, and then it should start flowing by itself. One of the problems is that governments quite naturally, and government officials quite naturally, get enamored with their roles and they keep pressing the pump, pressing the pump, pressing the pump, and they don't pay enough attention to see that there's actually water in there. So it's very important that when governments do provide a little bit of financing just to prime the pump, that they also know when to step back and see when it's uh, self-sustaining. One of the mistaken roles of government a lot of times is to take the pain or the risk out of entrepreneurship and that's a mistake because uh, entrepreneurship thrives in adversity. So why do entrepreneurs start businesses that don't scale? You've talked about the importance of creating businesses that can scale just when it comes to you know actually generating economies that can grow especially now during the recession. Um, in order to scale do entrepreneurs have to conceptualize their ideas as big from the beginning? It depends on what you mean by conceptualize. If you don't have a bee in your bonnet, you know, a bug, if you don't have that restlessness, the so-called ants in your pants, if you don't have that, then you, you won't be a good entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs have to have that drive, that ambition, that dissatisfaction, that it's never enough, that there's always more opportunity to look for and to grab. And that's really essential. Whether they have a fully blown vision of where they're going, some do and some don't. My friend Jim McCann, who founded 1-800-Flowers, he started off by buying one little flower shop in Manhattan. That could have stayed one Jim's flower shop, but he had in his mind just some concept of, I want to be the McDonald's of flower shops. He didn't have a real clear idea of what that was, but he kept on looking for it, and he keeps looking for it. It's the biggest flower distributor in the world right now. That, that sense of, I want to be bigger, that ambition, the drive, the, 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 the push for achievement, the aspiration, that's an essential part of entrepreneurship. Is thinking small a crime? I mean, what if I just want to open up a falafel shop and just run that one falafel shop in downtown Amman? You know, would, should, would we not call that person an entrepreneur? First of all, if you want to f uh, set up a falafel shop in Amman, God bless you. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not what I call entrepreneurship, unless it has the ambition to grow, to be another falafel shop, another one, and another one, and then maybe a franchise, and then maybe a falafel concept, and then maybe an integrated range of services. That's entrepreneurship. Is there any way for governments or just the ecosystem in general to kind of tap into that idea of scaling and spread it? First of all, I don't think that every individual has nor needs to have that drive to be big, that restlessness. It's a, it's, even in the most entrepreneurial of places, it's still a very small portion of the population. When you talk to them, to those people, those who really have the ambition to grow, and you ask them, 
What do you need from government specifically? Their deepest desire is that government get out of the way. If only government would make, would not make it easier, but get out of the way, would sort of remove the obstacles that government itself can oftentimes create. That should be the highest priority. Well, Dan, thanks so much for chatting with WAMDA. It's great to get your insight. I love what you're trying to do at WAMDA, and I wish you all the success. Thank you.